So hi guys, uh, I'm Mehdi. I'm going to talk about the App Hub. Um, talk about the new published workflows we've been working on, which will hopefully allow you to publish updates through your CI and CD pipelines. I'm going to talk about the App Hub guidelines, which we've updated very recently, and that um, what well, you should follow when you submit to the App Hub, and I'll walk you through that. And I'm going to talk about the um, updates, so sort of things that we've been working on, uh, new features, a new user experience, and how that's going to affect you. So, publish workflows. Um, I'm going to talk about the existing uh, workflow of uploading apps directly through the web interface. And I'm, I'm going to be talking about the uh, upcoming feature that we're very happy to introduce uh, very soon, hopefully, which is using the uh, D2 uh, command line uh, utility to uh, publish your apps directly from either your CI, CD pipeline, or maybe even uh, manually from your machine, uh, which is a workflow very similar to what you may have with the experience through NPM and maybe some other package managers. So the current uh, workflow that uh, some of you may have experienced is using the web interface of the app up, where you see the screen where you've got four sections, your general version, developer and image sections, and then provide the information manually. Now, of course, a lot of this information will be similar for all of your apps, like your developer information should be the same for most of your apps if you're part of the same organization. Uh, maybe even some of your um, logos and screenshots are very similar, and then your version information, uh, as in the minimum and maximum DHIS versions might be similar across applications. So we wanted to standardize this workflow, make it easier for you guys. And uh, we've introduced API keys as well as the uh, D2 Publish tool, which I'm going to walk you through now. So before we can uh, discuss these tools, I'd like to talk about the new API key screen of the App Hub. So if you go on the uh, sidebar, uh, you should see an API key section, uh, which will invite you to generate your own API key that you can then use to talk to the App Hub. And this API key will be, uh, well, first of all, it should be treated as a password. So each user, so each App Hub user, so that will be your own account at the App Hub, gets its own API key. And that key lets you do pretty much anything that you can really do through the web interface. And uh, because of the power that comes with it, you should really treat these keys as passwords. So please don't commit them to any public repos. Uh, store them as a secret in your CI pipeline. Um, most pipelines allow you to do that. And then, of course, if you need any help setting that up, uh, feel free to contact me and I'll try to help you out with that. Now, currently, you get one API key per user, and we're hoping to make that more uh, granular in the future. Maybe multiple API keys um, per user organization. So then you can really separate uh, your different roles and responsibilities. Um, so if you have any feedback about how you think that should look like, please feel free to get in contact with me. So this API key is very important for an upcoming feature, which is publishing through the D2 uh, utility. And you will just be providing that API key as an environmental variable to the script. And then that will allow the script to just talk to the App Hub directly uh, without having to use a web interface. And then, of course, it will make it much easier to integrate with a pipeline. And this new published script uses the uh, configuration in your d2config.js, which should already be present in an app platform app. If you're using a, uh, if you're not part of the app platform, um, so if your application is outside of the app platform, you'll probably have a manifest, um, and we recommend just moving to the new D2 config and then using that. And through the D2 config, you can specify your app version, your minimum DHIS version, maximum DHIS version, and um, other information that you normally provide in the um, web interface. And this script is very similar to existing JavaScript tooling like NPM. So some of you may have used NPM Publish before. Uh, our tool is pretty much exactly the same. It just takes your um, app, creates a bundle, and then uploads it to the App Hub using the API key. Uh, we're hoping to release this very soon. We've got a PR open that we've been working on uh, very hard lately. And we're just hoping to um, make some finishing changes and push it through. And um, yeah, so this new script will allow you to integrate your um, publishing workflow with your CI and CD instead of doing it manually. And what we recommend is having one branch for the stable version of your app that you think should be published to the App Hub, uh, maybe another branch for your development work, and then having a workflow take that stable branch and then just publishing every commit using the published script. Um, 
is very similar to what we've been doing for our repos where we have a um, where we tag each release, have a version and publish to NPM. And then we just, so if you guys need any help, we've really got that experience that we can help you guys with. Now, uh, the submission process. Uh, so when submitting an app to the App Hub team, um, it will first be pending. That means that only you can see that app. And then the App Hub team will be reviewing that app within the week or two. Um, normally only takes us a week or two to actually uh, get to apps and review them and provide feedback. And all we do is check that the app is suitable and that you follow all guidelines. Um, once an app is approved, future versions do not require a review. So don't worry if you need to get a uh, bug fix out quickly, that's not a problem. And a game rejected isn't uh, that big of a deal. It just means we have some feedback uh, that we'll like incorporate it and then we'll approve you as soon as that's dealt with. So to help us make previews as quick as possible, please document your apps very clearly with clear names and descriptions. That way we can actually understand the purpose of the app and what we should be testing. Uh, if you can provide example use cases or example data, it's very useful as well. And even more uh, preferable is linking to your source code and that will be your unminified, uh, uncompressed source code. So I can just really look at how it, the app works, how it communicates with instances, and help us provide better feedback. And of course, up-to-date contact details so allows to email you much quicker and um, get that feedback that you need to get your app approved uh, much faster. Now I'm going to talk about the uh, submission guidelines, which has two sections. The first one is the required information. And the second one is just more um, a wider range of guidelines, but I'll walk you through, through that in uh, detail. Uh, and of course, the guidelines are available online. Uh, the latest version is available at this link on the developer portal. And since the documentation is open source, if anything is unclear, please just um, you know, uh, fork the repo, make your changes, and um, submit pull requests. We'll be very happy to review your changes and try to make the text more clear. Now, uh, required information. So I'm going to be walking you through any information that really absolutely must be included for us to uh, prove an app. Uh, first of all is the app name. That should be very clear and descriptive. Try to capture what the app actually does in just a few words so the users you know, browsing the app will know exactly what they're uh, looking at. And try to avoid names that are very similar to other apps available both on the App Hub and provided by us. That way it just makes it easier for users to, um, it makes them less likely to be confused with other apps and um, it's just better overall. Now the, uh, your app icon, uh, by making a unique app icon, um, you'll make your app really stand out on the App Hub. And um, it allows users to, once they've installed the app, differentiate from the others in the application menu. So it's actually quite important to be um, unique. It doesn't have to be uh, a work of art. We just want something that you know is very clear and unique. And your description is also important for users that actually want to um, explore what your app does on the App Hub. So once they click through, they'll see your description. Uh, that'll be pretty much the first thing they see. And it should just answer two questions really. What does this app allow the user to do and who is it useful for? Uh, we've also got uh, screenshots and source code as part of our required information guidelines. So screenshots are just two to three images of uh, most important screens of your app. Um, you can upload as many as you think are useful. We don't really have a limit, um, but there's no need to show every screen. Just focus on the main ones and try to show any example data if you can that place all the data, since empty screens are very uh, useful. Uh, your source code. So if you can provide a link to your um, Git, your source code on maybe GitHub or GitLab or any other public platform, that will not only allow us to review it much quicker, but allows uh, technical perspective users to really explore what your app does and if it's correct for their instance. Now, another guideline we have is that app should be generic. So they should be able to run on any DHIS2 instance within the specified version range. So there shouldn't be any weird custom implementation uh, dependencies or other things like that. Your, um, your dependencies should all be open source as well. Um, so of course, when you link your code, uh, maybe on GitHub or GitLab, you should be able to see all your dependencies. This is clearly, they should all be open source with correct licenses. Um, now, the one exception to that is that if you communicate to third party services, they don't have to be open source. Um, but please mark it very clearly in your app's description 
that you do talk to third party services. And of course, uh, we have a design system uh, where we lay out the principles and um, expect user experience of our apps, and we expect your apps to follow them too. Now, to make that much easier for you guys, we've created a DHIS2 UI package uh, that has already made React components to implement the design system uh, completely, and all of our apps use it. So we highly recommend that you guys use it too, and it'll just make everything much easier. Um, now, if you're using the app platform, you might have noticed that we insert the header bar component automatically. But if you don't use our app platform, then please uh, include the header bar component. That way, all apps will have a consistent uh, menu and information at the top. Of course, you need some documentation as well. So if you could provide a user manual or any other kind of information, explain to users what your app does, how to use it, how to get up to speed, that makes reviewing not only much quicker, but makes it more likely for others to use and contribute back to your app. Uh, now we had a workshop yesterday on security and performance. I'm going to go through this uh, kind of quickly um, because I recommend you guys look at the workshop to uh, for more detail. But essentially, uh, our security guidelines are the same as what we've discussed before. Work should be uh, following up-to-date security best practices. Uh, you should not be hard coding any passwords or usernames. And uh, please avoid a data store. Try to use a user data store, which limits who can access the data. And of course, please use cookie authentication instead of basic authentication. That way, we can leverage the existing um, login and workflow that we've created. And uh, regarding cross-site scripting, if you use React, you don't really need to worry. But with other frameworks, make sure you've enabled um, all protections. Now, on our <clears throat> sorry, on our App Hub guidance um, web page, we've listed out the security uh, requirements in much more detail, along with any um, tips that we have. Now, performance, um, same as what was discussed in the workshop yesterday, please use pagination. Some instances really do have um, a large number of users and organization units, unfortunately. Um, but through pagination, we can uh, work through that, make sure our apps work everywhere. And um, please don't assume a fast and stable network connection. And that's why we recommend use specifying the fields you need from the API. <clears throat> Sorry. And that will significantly reduce the bandwidth required by your app, as well as making it much more snappy. Now, updates. Um, right, so we've got a new redesign of the App Hub coming through. And through that, a new user experience that should make it easier for both users and app developers to uh, submit and and, and um, examine apps. So we're um, very happy to be providing you that in the next few weeks, hopefully, maybe even by next week. Um, and with that, we'll also be providing a new app management app in the next DHIS2 release, um, because we're really focusing on investing in that pub, making it a better platform for app updates, both from our side and from um, the side of external app developers. So we're very much looking forward to those updates. Um, yeah, so that's it from me.